Yes! 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 <laughs> and I was correct. All right, we've got it hooked up. So let's turn it on for the first time. Since the plan drove, okay, we've got LED lights. I'm gonna switch to input HDMI. Let's see. So this we've got power, so that's good. It says no cable connected. All right, so that's not a major problem. This computer turns on, but with no display on the monitor. And this is possibly the hardest troubleshoot for most of you to carry out if you only have one system and no access to compatible known working parts to test with. Let's check it out. This gaming PC was a case swap situation and the client said it was working fine in the previous case before the swap. The mistake he made was not to do a post power on self test between the case swap and also at various stages of reassembling the PC parts back into the new case. For the case we have the IONX KZ16, the power supply is a TX750M from Corsair with a Ryzen 9 3900X CPU on an Asus B450M-K motherboard with two sticks of 8GB RAM totaling 16GB DDR4 with a GTX 1080 from Palit and finally we have a Sabrent 512GB SSD NVMe drive. The client said he only added a couple of case fans and did some basic troubleshooting like RAM and cable reseating, nothing else. I said this can be the hardest faulty component to troubleshoot, this will become clear throughout the video and at the end I will also address one huge elephant in the room when it comes to troubleshooting. Since the client says that the computer was working fine before the case swap and right now there is no display on the monitor although the computer turns on the fan spinning I've decided to remove the inner parts and breadboard it and I've also removed the 1080 GPU the two sticks of RAM and the one uh, NVMe SSD so I've uh, put in a known working uh, Corsair 750M CX another crappy GPU this is the G TS 450 and uh, I've also put two known working RAM sticks on there what we're going to do is do a post test outside the case which is the biggest mistake the client made when he swapped he did not check whether the components were working outside of the case before putting them into the new case post test one outside of the case so we've got the fan spinning on the cooler LED lights fan spinning on the power supply and the GPU as well but still no display on the monitor okay so at this stage although we do have a speaker cable on there but I don't know if it works I haven't heard any beeps since or lack of beep as well we have pretty much eliminated the power supply RAM and the graphics card because these are known working components so now I'm left with uh, removing the cooler to swap for a known working CPU we can test that and if that doesn't work then we're gonna conclude that's gonna be the board so let's just remove the RAM we can get to the cooler in a sec the trucker there we go and voila so we've removed that at least the processor is still there I'm just gonna quickly check it I'm not gonna remove any of the dry thermal paste yet but the thermal paste does look at like it pretty much dried up it's gonna need reapplying I wonder if it's a case of overheating. I'm hoping not. The CPU is coming out. I might as well just take it and have a look. Looks fine to me. It doesn't look like any bent pins. Okay, that's gone in. Put it back. You don't need the cooler to do a pause test. So I'm just going to do a quick pause test because I've reseated the processor and I'm going to use a known working RAM. Okay, let me just try one this time. This slot seems a bit stuck so I'm gonna put the slot in uh, B1 okay let's power up the motherboard we are going to use the GTS 450 because at least I know that works and last but not least I am going to plug in the HDMI cable okay pause test 2 Right, still says no cable connected. 
fan spinning fan spinning but no pause all right so at this stage we are going to have to swap the processor i'm going to get my own processor a ryzen 7 2700x onto this board this is the ryzen 7 2700x i'm going to swap this onto this board and i know this to be working for sure so that's mine so let's remove this and we'll put that in there again we're not going to need the cooler at this stage hopefully and it fits in right okay let's put back the graphics card plug in the hdmi unfortunately as you can see in this next part i forgot to plug in the pci power cable for the graphics card but i promise you i actually did the test again with the same results i.e no pause it's just i've lost the footage unfortunately so at this stage i am almost confident that there's a problem with the board to be absolutely certain what i've done is i've uh, swapped his own gpu the pali 1080 and his own two ram sticks into my system with my ryzen 2 700x so we're going to do a quick pause test. Got LED lights on, fan spinning, and we'll press delete on the keyboard. And yep, we've got some sort of display. There you go. So we have confirmed that his GPU works, his RAM works, his power supply works. Uh, the and the only thing we haven't been able to confirm is whether the processor, his own processor, is 100% working. But most likely than not, it's going to be the motherboard that's the problem. We're just going to get a replacement motherboard. And yeah, as you can see, this just switched off right now because we haven't put the cooler on. So yeah, you can test for a quick post if you haven't got the cooler on. But chances are the processor is going to overheat. So it's best to always put it on if you're not sure what you're doing. I take risks. You know, I'm dangerous like that. I've ordered a replacement brand new motherboard. This is the Asus Prime B550M-K. This was chosen by the client. It costs about £91 something from Amazon Prime Delivery. So we are going to give that a quick uh, swappy rooney. All right. So this is the old motherboard. And I'm going to remove the processor in a minute. Remember to always use a surface non uh, conductive surface for your motherboard this is a slightly better version of the older motherboard so compatibility is not an issue I'm gonna try my best to not mess this up arrow arrow straight in there zero insertion force get in there there we go that plugs in nicely now if our theory is correct this should work if it's not then I don't know now let's put back his um, we're gonna just try to put on the cooler just for argument's sake okay post test one with a new motherboard yes 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 <laughs> and I was correct is definitely the motherboard brand new motherboard and we've got the 1080 we've got the AMD Ryzen uh, 9 3900X and 26 of 8 gigabyte of RAM so fantastic so we could go in there to check the BIOS um, I'm not going to do that just yet or maybe I just plug in the mouse and keyboard actually let's do this we'll do a second test just to be sure so let's restart that and then we can go into BIOS, do some checks. There we go. Sorted. F1 to run setup. Let's just go in. There we go. We've got our post successful. And now I'm going to put that back into the case and finish off this video. From this point onwards, I reapplied new thermal paste and gradually reassembled everything back into the new case. And most importantly, I repeated various staged posts until the final one and of course a new motherboard means a fresh installation of windows 10 with a new license key a cheap one online this time the client went with a pro version instead of the previous home version sometimes you might be lucky that the new motherboard will allow you to boot into your existing drive but you would almost always need a new license as far as i know
As for what to do if you need to troubleshoot this type of issue, I'm afraid you're typical if you only have one system and no access to non-working compatible parts. Because this particular issue stems from a faulty motherboard, you can't even depend on beep codes or self-test digital codes present on some high-end motherboards. And now for the huge elephant in the room. Some of you have been complaining in the comments in previous troubleshoot videos. This guy wants us to buy a new part to troubleshoot our computer that's not working. Not a solution at all. Dislike. Well, I'm not sorry to burst your bubble, but yeah, pretty much. Despite what you may have been led to think about your self-entitlement, if you don't have the parts and the expertise, you can't test for them. Therefore, pay a professional to do it for you. YouTube is only free to watch, but it's not free to solve all of your problems. But for those of you who have a bit more common sense, do the following. Number one, borrow known working parts from a friend to test. Or number two, buy cheaper used parts or brand new parts with good return warranty to test for suspect faulty components. You can always return them and the return postage will cost a fraction of any full repair labor cost. However, if this issue happens after a successful post, i.e. no display on the monitor, then the issue could be one or more of the following. A faulty video cable, faulty or wrong video port, monitor issues, etc. Watch this troubleshoot video for more details. And if you need further help on other computer troubleshoot issues, this series on your screen should help. And I will see you there. Peace out.